Kofi Annan, the only black African to become UN Secretary General who passed yesterday at the age of 80. His home country, Ghana, has declared a week of national mourning. Annan served two terms as UN chief from 1997 to 2006 and was awarded a Nobel Peace Prize for his humanitarian work. And he was seen as a gifted statesman, but his service also showcased the weakness of the organization, as many have accused him of failing to intervene in the, Rwa the Rwandan genocide when he headed the UN's peacekeeping uh, department. Uh, you served in the UN after uh, yes. he was uh, uh, the chief. Uh, but what's your take on the man and, and, and his legacy? First, you know, I want to tell you a story that the year is 1997. Here I am in London, not as ambassador. And uh, President Weissman, that is the first and the last until now visit of a Israeli uh, president to the United Kingdom. Ezra Weizmann. At Ezra Weizmann, at Marble Art Synagogue, Weizmann, the Queen, and Kofi Annan basically unveil this issue on the Second World War. And, you know, Kofi Annan, you could see his heart basically saying, yes, there were many victims, uh, 30 million Russians, but Jews all over were victims. And, uh, and he basically, uh, you could see his, his heart towards the Jewish people and what happened. That's one issue. The second part, him as peace-speaking forces, and he has this, you know, quite charisma, but mm -hmm. he failed quite dramatically, mm -hmm. not just in, in Rwanda, but also in Somalia. And, uh, and in the sense, when he was, after he finished being Secretary General, when he was appointed as a personal envoy on Syria, after six months, Yeah, so he didn't failure. last very long, right? Did, yeah. did he fail, so the sense did, did he fail or just, did the organization fail? Because the organization, to begin with, doesn't have the tools yes, or the power. Yes, but, to... but in the sense, of course the organization, the UN, you know, peacekeeping forces in right, the UN. Right. This is, you know, an oxymoron by definition. <laughs> mm -hmm. We remember what happened here, you know, Lebanon before 1967, uh, yes. when NASA told them to go out, the velocity in which they ran out is in the Guinness World Book of Records. Mm -hmm. Und of en uh, unifil up in the north. I mean, peacekeeping forces uh, uh, are not really effective. But Kofi Annan, although he tried, wasn't really successful in those issues. And he was at times very critical of, of Israeli policies as well. How, how do you think he dealt with the Israeli-Palestinian conflict? Look, he was critical, but I've seen other secretary generals. Say, on the scale yeah, of UN secretary scale of UN, generals, exactly. yeah. On the scale, he was okay. Awesome. The, exactly. Elaborate I mean, on that. Everything's, everything's relative to that. He was very sensitive on Holocaust issues. The first um, Holocaust cartoon contest in Iran happened on his watch, and he was very outspoken oh. in condemning it. But they say, you know, all that uh, you need for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. And he didn't do enough on Rwanda. And really, that will be a stain on his legacy, the fact that that happened when uh, when he could have done something. Ron, you, just to yeah. step in. Agree with that? He also, I agree 100%. He also worked with Sylvain Shalom promoting the International Holocaust. Memorial Day, so I do give Former him... Foreign Minister, Israeli Foreign Minister, yeah. Shalom, yes. yeah, sorry. So I do give him credit for that. He was very critical of Israel. I think it's fair to be critical of Israel. My problem here is, is that sometimes he was critical with no base, and he, he had taken back some of his statements. The only thing it was just too late. Yeah. And just before we go, sir, uh, no. you recently started, I believe, a campaign called uh, UN Accountable? Unaccountable. Un yeah, well, I said... Yes, well, the, I said capital yeah, yeah. Okay. Unaccountable. Unaccountable. Tell Absolutely. us a bit more about double that. Double meaning. Double meaning. <laughs> uh, double meaning, of course. Basically saying, uh, especially, not just in the U.S., to American taxpayers and others, hey guys, no accountability, no transparency. You, the American taxpayers, are giving $9.2 billion a year with mm. voluntary funds to the United Nations. It's high time they go out against American interests. American. Basically, look at where this money is going. Mm. And I can tell you stories, and please go into the unaccountable. Right. <laughs> you're unaccountable. <laughs> could a, could email, something like this work? You, that? You'll see amazing stuff about how, uh, how the UN works, and it works in a catastrophic okay. way. I, I agree. We're in competition. I just finished, uh, <laughs> finished a long research about this topic. 
uh, which hopefully will be published in the, in the next uh, month. Um, the problem with the UN, first of all, what's the difference between the UN and the League of Nations? It's the United States. That's the, the biggest difference. There's no real teeth to that. The problem is that there's no transparency. The people are working against their mandate, and some of the money goes to either vilify Israel or terror. Allison, 20 seconds on what you think about this campaign. Uh, well, the UN is the only one we've got. There's no alternative. So uh, if you care about it, then yes, you have to look into it and reform it. But I don't think that destroying it is the answer. No, not Defund destroying. But in essence, we have to look, I mean, there's a institutional and structural bias against Israel, not just with the bad guys, mm. also with the so-called like-minded countries. We have to look at it, okay. lights off, spot on.